today we are going to dive into a little bit more of a photorealistic generation type. You know, we have a number of folks that are working as photographers, working in advertising. And one of the common asks we get for studio sessions is focusing less on the more artistic side of things, the illustrative artistic approach to generating and really diving more into how do we get real? How do we achieve the kind of photorealism that we need and want when we're doing professional work? And that's, that's what we're gonna focus on today. We're getting real. Two models that we're going to use today one is sdxl one is flux we're going to go through both model architectures and kind of different ways they can work on their own as well as together we'll kind of talk about optimizing for less plasticky looks and kind of what what you can do to tune things and we'll talk about working with them together as well so we're going to dive in and have a lot of fun first things first let's start by just looking at the difference in uh, composition, structure, look and feel of SDXL and Flux. I'll go to the canvas. We'll start generating stuff in the canvas. I'll start with real viz and I'll just use one of our default prompts. Although I may change some of this because bokeh has kind of like this like glowy light in the background type thing that we don't necessarily want in this. And I am going to do. And we'll just leave default settings and see what we get. Uh, this one's like not bad, right? So he's like sitting, looking out. You can almost imagine taking this and putting an overlay. What are you doing with your life? The answer, blank.com, whatever it is, right? Generally right now, what we're trying to do is just get an idea of wh what does it look like? What are the differences? And then I'm going to switch to Flux Dev and we'll see what the difference is. Now, we do need to change our prompt. We need to be a little bit more like verbose and uh, use natural language. By default, Flux Dev is going to have a guidance of four. That's kind of like the flat, normal guidance. And guidance is somewhat like the CFG scale of SDXL. It's not quite exactly the same thing. These aren't one-to-ones, but you can think of it roughly as an equivalent. We'll generate one at four and then one at a lower guidance, and we'll just kind of compare the images. So we'll do one at four and then maybe one at two. Let's just, for the sake of like fun, have one going for... Uh, three so we can see what that middle point is as you get like lower guidance what you can see is it's a little bit flatter you know what i mean so as we move towards four it gets kind of really sharp and crisp but, but it it can almost be too strong of an effect because that crispness can make things look less realistic as we get lower on the guidance it becomes a little bit more realistic because life is a little bit flatter than these ai generated images might otherwise have you believe. And when we get really low, it kind of becomes even more flat and becomes less uh, crisp. Let's go ahead and take this one here. This one's not too bad. And we'll kind of use that as our example of flux. Both of these have their strong points. What I really like the most about this one is just the general color feels a lot more interesting. Overall, I, I think that kind of shows in flux. But the question is like, how do we make this like look better? What does in painting look like? And I think we're going to maybe take two approaches. I'm going to scale this down and I'm going to apply an in paint with flux on this image that we generated before. So we're going to select this piece, get our bounding box perfect. The denoising strength is a little bit different with flux. But typically what I found is that you can go a little bit higher on the denoising strength and still keep a lot of the consistency and coherence. So we're going to keep this at 0.75 and trying this out. So we're kind of seeing the difference here between what flux would do and what the SDXL model would do. So let's try maybe another one or two. And we'll also try maybe turning down the denoising strength. We'll change that to random. Yeah, so this is the before, this is the after. Generally, if we're looking at the details here, I think Flux has a little bit more of a natural look to it. The way I would describe it is SDXL seems to have a little bit more texture to it, but the lighting and the kind of overall fabric and material looks a little bit more aligned with reality on Flux. And I, I say, especially with like hair, there's a lot of depth to the hair. That's one direction is layering Flux on an SDXL image. Typically though, most people are actually gonna advocate for using Flux for structure and then detailing or adding detail on with SDXL. So let's go ahead and do that. And we'll add another in-paint mask. We'll in-paint this fella. 
And then we are going to switch to our real viz model. And then I'm going to keep the denoising strength. We'll pull this up and maybe do this shoe here. And we'll see what we get when we apply real viz to this man. We can see that like the scaled bounding box is probably one of the bigger drivers here of getting better detail, but maybe we will go even a little further and see if we can go higher. Yeah. Cause it's, it's changing the background a fair bit as well. But overall, there's like a lot of good depth on that. But I think generally the look and feel that we're going for is probably more like along those lines. And we want to iterate and tweak that a little bit. So we'll take that. Maybe what I'll do, though, is we'll compare what that in painting would look like between Flux and SDXL. I think what you'll find here is that this looks crispy to me. You know, it's a little bit like eye contrast and it kind of doesn't fit as well. We'll add it and then we will compare the two generations. So I'll hide this in painting. And you can see what we had with real viz versus what we got with flux. And I think this is kind of the general assessment I've had is that like when you really want to get that perfect mix of realism, you're typically going to want to switch between models, right? Certain model architectures have a different aesthetic and a different kind of creative look and feel. And being able to composite that ultimately is going to give you more fine tuned control over what details are highlighted where. And I think that's a really interesting way to think about it is what are the strengths of each model and how do I orchestrate my in painting and the process by which I control the generation in order to get the best output? Can you do a concept? for a billboard out of home campaign for a travel credit card, landscape 16 by nine aspect ratio, Wanderlust vibe. I love the word Wanderlust, the name of my World of Warcraft paladin in high school. Great word, we love Wanderlust. We're gonna do it. We're gonna do 16 by nine. All in all, I think this is okay. One of the fun things with Flux is that we can actually just like draw kind of like, maybe I'll just do like a little bit like of a noisy thing here. Then I'll do a little bit of a noisy thing here. And I'm going to right click, I'm going to filter this and I am going to noise this image. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. We're noising this. We do salt and pepper, turn colored noise off. We're going to turn the amount up and really just some like adding noise to this one region. So we've got salt and pepper. We've added that in. It's mixed. We'll apply that. And then I'm just going to in paint this. And we are going to say. And we're going to turn this up. We need it to be pretty high to get this to do anything for us. Oh, and I even added like a little little symbol there. Isn't that nice? Excellent. It's great for concepting. It's good as an idea generator. What I would probably do though, is, you know, use this for the concept. And then if we're actually, you know, like using this image coming, actually doing the work to design it. Well, this is really just a useful way to get like, what might that font look like? Is it sans serif? Is it serif? What, like, what are the, what's the weight of it? Right. There's a lot of stuff that we can really explore very quickly with, you know, is a good idea generator. Um, the next thing that I'm going to do, and we're just going to focus on detailing our kind of explorer guy. I'm going to show you a little trick. What I'm going to do is because I'm working on just this area and because I really just want to kind of like do some in painting here with control, I'm going to show you two ways that you can make this controllable really quick. You can right click and from the menu, create from bounding box. What that's going to do is take a little snapshot of our bounding box and it's going to be able to create a new layer from that. Now we can create any type. We can create a reference image from this snap. We can do a control layer. We can even create a new raster layer if we wanted to have another copy of just this one region. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a control layer from just this one area. And that is going to give me a new control layer that's just this, this kind of region within the bounding box. I'm going to take a contour detection. It's going to analyze the edges and give that back to me. And then once I apply that, I'll have a targeted or regional control net that I can work with, right? So now I've got my targeted regional control net. We are going to in paint our gentleman here. We'll do this with real viz. We're going to generate. Yeah, I like that. Be bold. We're going to do this hand 
It's a weird looking hand. Let's bring this control down a little bit. We don't want to overly constrain it. Uh, you know, there's some weirdness, but we're not going to overly fixate on this like fake demonstration image. Okay, so we got that. We got our, we get rid of our control layer. It's kind of good. Now we're going to focus on this dirt road and we'll focus on dirt. I'm going to upweight dirt as we're going in here and in painting with this. And I'll turn this down to about 0.45. Definitely looks less fake. I'm going to try, try KDPM2 here. I'm going to see if I... I'm going to take it, but then I'm going to do another pass. I want to see where we can get to. I want to see if I can get to like, can't tell that it's not butter type wheel. You know what I mean? Okay, come on. Get out of here. Can't tell that it is not butter. So we are going to compare this. I'll merge this down. So we can just do like a before and after. Before and after before and after. Wah, la. Woo, that's good stuff. I like that. Somebody said pandas being suggested, varmints, big grizzly bears coming from behind. So we'll take some browns and we'll kind of draw our little grizzly bear back here and we'll say, it's gonna be like that panda situation that we had a while back. All right, let's try uh, regional guidance. Grizzly bear, guide you here. Hey, look at that. Look at that grizzly bear. <laughs> Thumbs up. Wow, not bad. Okay, we got our grizzly bear. I made the people happy. All right, that's it for today, everybody. We had a lot of fun, as always. Hopefully this was useful. Feel free to share your feedback, thoughts, comments, and concerns on the YouTube video, as you always do. We'll see you next time. Take care.